All right, so here we have another friendly star battle X in-house match in the bottom right Wow, I just said bottom right in the bottom left of The red team we have star lord going mine opening star lord going or sorry graveyard going five missiles and a Colossus, that's an interesting weapon. Blunt Force going Plague, Devoom going Imp, Tyra going Rockets, 9 range. And Helvetikano going 5 Imps. For the blue team, against Helvetikano we have Agam on a Guardian, 9 range with 2 Spore Ups. We have JJ Beast with Plague. We have Argyle with Charges. We have Dead Ghost with Imp. Lion King going 4-3. This is... Certainly this is a build I like quite a bit. And... Tazabradas coming out with uh, two rates. Interesting, kind of a farming opening. Seems like he came out a little bit late too, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But ultimately right now, Lion King is actually down. I think that's mostly because of the plague though. Otherwise the shields would be pretty even. Uh, you'd think that, you know, in an opening like this, most of the time, the, uh, the four shields will do more for you than that, uh, the extra point one speed and the fifth rocket up. But certainly if you want to be able to be aggressive, you know, the fifth rocket up can be quite nice, and also the, really the point one speed can be quite important if you do need to get away or if you need to chase someone. So there are, there are reasons to, to go for the extra speed. Vatikano getting pushed a bit by Agam. We have Star-Lord cutting in and trying to get some charges down on Lion King. He has three more charges, which will be enough if he... Oh, oh, he got emped. Denied, Star-Lord. Dead Ghost just says, nope, don't want none of that. Lion King is still low, though, and now he's taking rockets from Tiber. He decided to stay a little bit longer than I think was a totally good idea. Tiber almost could have pushed into that and maybe gotten the last volley, which might have been enough. But they're still going to get a good push out of this. They won't be able to stay very long because they're all so low. But they might get enough of a push here to, to get a, a noticeable lead in the uh, economy. And Blue probably is coming back with not enough to really get any good upgrades. Yeah, no one's going to be able to get uh, much in the way of abilities, except maybe JJ Beast. So we'll have to watch what JJ Beast picks up. He goes from 300 energy to... Ah, he got the plague upgrade. And then dumped the rest into energy. So now, red team will have to go back. Ultimately, they only ended up, up 100 farms, so maybe that wasn't really quite enough. It was still a good push, and they're certainly not down at the moment. But blue will presumably be able to recover most of what they've lost right here just on the, the pushback. And that is where the game will truly begin. What happens when red gets back, right? This is the most critical moment in a lot of games is what happens when red gets back, what upgrades do they get at this moment, and how do they use those upgrades to maybe generate a kill when they come back out. So Star-Lord, coming back with 500 minerals, gets bots, protect the field, okay. Still no hole, but uh, he's got two sustain-based spells. Lump Force with Siphon, Tiber with Afterburners, Helvaticano with Temps, and Devoom just still focusing on the energy. So ultimately this is not a, uh, a moment where they want to say, okay, we're going to try to win the game right now. Instead what they're saying is, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we can consistently push out because we have a strong end game, right? And that makes sense based on their composition. Helvaticano with the carrier will eventually be able to really run havoc on most of this composition. Um, they don't really have any particularly good way of dealing with Tempests, and they don't have any particularly good way, really, of uh, dealing with Ents. 
So the longer the game goes, theoretically, the stronger Helveticano's carrier becomes. And wow, they might actually, I mean, I didn't even notice Graveyard did get Lance, and he might be able to get a pick here. Wow, he even had the, the, the Afterburner, and he just couldn't get away. That was a very unexpected pick. Sorry, I didn't uh, catch it earlier. But Tizabardas really just got uh, got picked off there, basically by Graveyard on his own. Graveyard just came up and said, okay, I have the, uh, the five rockets, and now I have Lance, and I'm just going to chase anyone down I can and try to kill him. So that's a pretty significant pickup because Tzabardost was uh, was their number three farmed ship. So this is going to be a much more noticeable lead now for Red. Both because they're up a ship, but also because Argyle and Dead Ghost in particular is really poorly farmed. He's coming back again with 135. He still can't really even get enough to sustain Imp, which is what he wants. Lion King continues to, to hold on here. I mean, it's not over for Blue, but this is a very difficult situation because the Frigate can, in some situations, also be one of the best means for dealing with the carrier, right? The, uh, the lasers have a very high rate of fire. So if they wanted to, you know, sometimes people would say, oh, okay, you know, just go pure lasers, deal with the carrier, uh, clean up the ends all the time, and we will find a way to make a big play later on. But they can't do that now. They have one fewer ship to, to deal with the carrier ends, and one of the, the best ones for generating uh, sustained damage against light units. Oh, God, I'm really getting in here, trying to get some damage in on Devoom. Devoom down to 2,000. If they can get this pick, this is going to be where Blue gets back in the game. Losing the Raven would be very, very bad. 250 to 100. Oh, he goes down. Devoom is dead. Agon just came in and ate him with acid spores. Amazing. Oh, but Dead Ghost is going to go down as well. It's going to be Raven for Raven. Raven for Raven. And they might be able to pick off JJ Beast as well. Star nope, Star-Lord has to back off. Now he's being pushed by Lion King. And Star-Lord goes down. Graveyard is low, 2,000. He's taking a lot of damage here. Agam getting in with the spores, and Graveyard also goes down. Argyle is low. Tiber is still in this combat. He doesn't have the energy yet for the Afterburners. Starlord does not have the energy, though, for Thermal Lance. And wow, what... A, I, I mean, I said it's that it's that first group of ups that people pick as they're coming out. This is where a lot of games get decided. Ultimately, this is still a game because with the Lotta Counter's carrier, they still have they still have late game capabilities. They still have the uh, the Overlord who continues to get stronger. Uh, the fewer ships there are, but they are down a ship. It's really, I mean, the, the tankiness of blue is going to be a real problem now. Ooh, but uh, if they can actually get, if Tiber was able to get Agam here, that would be huge. But actually, he might be in trouble now that now Lion King can't get a Lance off. If Lion King had gotten the Lance off before the, uh, the, the Siphon got off, he would have been really in trouble. The blue team will eventually have to go back here. Lion King and Nagan both have a fair amount of money to spend. And, uh, but they gotta be careful because Salvatikano is just gonna continue to scale up. He's already at 17 ints. He can farm very safely and effectively. He never has to engage at this point. And without the Raven, it can actually be very, very, very hard to protect both the Guardian and the Overlord against the high ends of the carrier. So even though Red Team is down a ship right now, they still might overall... They certainly have the more in-game oriented composition still. Right, the, the question is whether Blue Team will be able to accelerate the game so that they do not get to the point where they're dealing with high-end interceptors. Right, once, once Helveticano has 400 energy, 
shield recharge and warpin and level 20 plus ints. He can just basically continue to spam them onto enemy ships and it makes it very hard for them to farm anything. And eventually something can just uh, get out of position and die very easily. Now Tiber won't be able to go mine so long as JJ Beast is alive. The, uh, the spotter will probably prevent him from doing that. And he, he actually is in kind of a, a rough spot because his rockets don't do particularly well against any of these ships. Um, but he does basically just need to stay on rockets and just try to, to kite and keep them from pushing in on the towers. So this is, this is actually, I mean, it seems like a normal, rather passive moment. But if blue team really felt very confident and wanted to try to pick a tower, this is a moment where they could have strongly considered that, right? While they know Tiber is weakened. It might be that they just don't have the damage yet and they know they don't have the damage yet. It's actually pretty likely. But you see Agam here, he wants to, to work it down a bit. He wants to soften it up in case they could go in on it. Wow, and Agam is really just able to, to punish Tiber here. He's not able to kite basically at all because of the cloud. But Helvana kind of was, uh, range 16 Tempests with 13 damage upgrades. Basically dealing 600 seconds, or I'm sorry, 600 damage. Well, 1200 damage every 3 seconds, so basically 400 damage a second when they are firing. But the Cloud, again, punishes the Tempest as well. Cloud is... Agam is getting a lot of value out of Cloud here. And wow, Tiber has to be really careful because he just got into range of, of Agam and he's going to be taking spores. Plagued and down to 1500, he has to be very careful about his positioning. And the thing is that, again, Red Team has the more late game oriented composition. But if they get really severely outfarmed, eventually, uh, especially with the Lance on Lion King, they can deal with Ents through that, right? This Lion King is now their main system for dealing with interceptors. Agam and JJ Beast will very soon be able to just work down a tower without putting either, any of their ships at risk. And Agam will also be making it very hard for Tiber to get in and, and really do practically anything. Lion King does not have Hardened Shield yet, so right now the Ions do actually do the full 3,500 damage to his shields. But without any sort of follow-up damage that won't necessarily do all that much. Blue Team is coming back with 1,000 in Orgyle, 1,200 in Lion King, 700 on JJ Beast and 1600, 1600 minerals on Agam. Uh, so it is going to be after this back. I think this is, might be where we see them trying to be more aggressive and taking a tower when they get back down again. They need to press this advantage as, as much as they can. Right? They don't want to just wait until they have all the farm in the world necessarily. Um, because, you know, all it takes is a few minutes of a carrier getting out and having uninterrupted farming. I mean, already the, the mineral difference is pretty close. Avatakano, you know, 500 for now, but he's still able to, you know, get warp in, and soon he'll have the shield recharge as well. And it's at that point where uh, the carrier really can start to get annoying. Basically, at some point, it means the Dreadnought never bothers getting Siege Mode, because he'll just get launched on every time. Whoa! What am I mi What just happened? I look away for a second, and somehow JJ Beast has died, and now Blunt Force is going- Oh my god! Both Overlords just died, and it looks like Tiber's gonna go down too, probably. He does have his Afterburner going. He might be able to get out of range, but he's taking Spore still. 11 range, and he goes down! Now it's the Havana Kano show. And this is, I mean, the Interceptors can be quite strong in a late game, but there's no way he manages to make this a late game now. Uh, 
with two tanks and a, a guardian with uh, level 14 spines, it's going to be really hard for Helvana Kano to get a pick. Basically, he would have to kill Agam. And they would have to not take a tower immediately, but it seems like they are going to try to take a tower pretty soon here. And yeah, Vortex can slow the game down some, but it probably won't be enough. I'm not really sh I don't think there's necessarily anything that really... that really can let Havada kind of win here. Maybe if he... If, maybe if he'd been going scouts all along, you know, now that all the supports are dead, he could have tried to get something in on, on Agam, get a good launch. But scouts are not really very particularly popular anymore, because, uh... Just uh, usually doesn't work, and Helvada kind of went ahead and, and left, so this game is now over. And yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you will continue to uh, check out my YouTube page for other exciting Star Battle videos. Catch you next time.